Hey everybody, it's Chuck and Stacy here with VO Buzz Weekly. We have an awesome episode. Have you ever watched HGTV's Love It or List It? Of course. Well, we have the incredible narrator Tina Morosco with us, and she's also a former agent and an amazing actress on camera. You've seen her too. Absolutely. So, let's get buzzed. A lot buzzed. of great info. Let's get buzzed. Turn it up. Get ready. You're tuned in to VO Buzz Weekly. Weekly. And now, prepare to get seriously buzzed with your hosts, Chuck Duran and Stacey J. Aswan. Our guest is flat out amazing. She is a former agent, has two master's degrees. You've seen her on camera acting in shows like Jane the Virgin and Castle. Mm -hmm. And you love her as the in-show narrator on HGTV's hit show, Love it or list it. Yeah. We love her. She is our stunning, talented, amazing friend, and she is going to get buzzed with us, and she is Tina Morosco. Yes, Tina Thank Morosco. You. Now, is it okay that it came pre-buzzed? Yes. yes. I had to get pre-buzzed to pre -buzzed keep up with to you guys. Pre-buzzed to get buzzed. We expect wow. nothing less. <laughs> so cool. So this is what's so cool. What's so little cool? little trivia. I knew you from back in New York, mm -hmm. and then you came out to L.A., and Chuck you was one Chuck. of the first people that I met when yes. I went to LA. Yeah. Oh, so I didn't know you that. knew each of us before Chuck and I knew each other. I know. Isn't so in a way, by the transitive property, mm -hmm. I am really responsible for all of this. Thank you. <laughs> and you I'm are. taking Thank full you. credit for all so of it. Good, you should. <laughs> We're adding another you should. host to the show. You know well, that would be America America and yeah. 90 countries abroad. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I know why you kept her from me because you probably said there is no way in hell that I'm going to introduce Stacy to that maniac. Yeah. Or uh, it could have been but as the other it turns way out, yeah. I'm not a maniac. No. I'm actually a very nice man. You're a very fine gentleman. I have to I'm tell very you, fond of what? you, your partnership has just led to so much goodness in the world that it just it brings me so much joy. Like oh, thanks, you're both thanks. some of the greatest people that I know, and you're so passionate about what you do, and you love each other, and it just like emanates from everything that you do, and it's thank really you. amazing. Thank and I think you. that's why you have the success that you have. Well, I think you. you're right. And we're so happy we share you. Absolutely. Aww. That's right. By the way, we were so excited to have I you know. on our show for many reasons. Yes. So List them all, please. Yes. No, we can't, because well. then you'll be like, you'll <laughs> Let's forget start about it, you'll walk away. from the gorgeous away. hair to the fab necklace, totally. the stunning face, the I mean, look at her, she's a fashionista. Absolutely. She's, uh. I yeah. gotta come here more often. Uh, you can come like here as often to. as you want. So check <laughs> this out. Obviously, there's nothing in the voiceover industry that you have not done, right? Seriously, you've been. <laughs> I feel no, so you, dirty. You've been an agent <laughs> and dirty. Well, we're not. This is the other show. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, That's so the director's you, you've stuff. You've been yes. an agent, mm -hmm. obviously a voice actor and an actor, uh, a coach yeah. um, from all different areas of voiceover. So not just commercial, not just whatever. Mm -hmm. So. I would like to ask, and since you probably have a good view of this, but a lot of people are asking for the the real person read yeah, nowadays, right? Non-announcer, so. conversational, blah blah. So maybe you could break that down for us a little bit and tell those guys out there that maybe don't have a great coach like you, Aww. how they could break it down to actually be able to simply deliver mm -hmm. a real conversational read without sounding like you're trying to do that. Right, which is honestly the only thing that's happening in the voiceover world right now, right. even in narration, even in promo, you know, places that have been classically more announcer driven. Yeah. Now they all want very natural, very conversational. On the bottom of every script you will see no announcers, non announcery. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. non announcery has become a word. It should right. be in like the dictionary. Exactly. Now. It's crazy. Yeah. So it is super important, but it's not quite as easy as just grab some guy off Ventura Boulevard and give him a piece of copy. It's it's gonna sound like somebody who's just talking. Yeah. But they're not gonna be able to convey the message that is intended by the advertiser. So there are still parameters within which you need to work. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to understand all of that. You need to understand, you know, what am I selling, first of all? Um, what's the intention behind it? And what's the approach? Is it, mm -hmm. you know, comedic? Is it very straightforward? Is it, you know, inspirational? Um, and once you kind of figure all of that out, then you go, all right, and they want it to be real person. Mm -hmm. I am a real person. but. I'm about 10 different real people in my actual life, right? right. I'm, I'm an actress, I'm a mom, I'm a voiceover coach, I'm um, somebody who's very spiritual and into my 
you know, my practices, you know, there's a million roles. You, you're a customer, you're, you know, right. you're, yep. you're a exactly. million different roles mm -hmm. every single owner, day. Right, right. Yeah. right. So, so if I'm a real person and I'm in the position of being a customer, I'm going to speak in a very different way than if I'm the boss, right? So right. you have to kind of figure all of that out while you're reading the script. You look for all of the clues, you read every single word on that script, including the title of the script, everything. Yeah. You look for every clue that will kind of tip you off as to what kind of real person am I. Mm. And then once you get acquainted with that, so say it's, you know, I'm a mom, right? Mm. So are you, am I a oh, fed up, worn out mom? Right, am busy I mom. Yeah, yeah, am I a wry comedic mom with a kid that's, you know, like driving me nuts? It, they're all different nuances, right? So it's not just as simple as, oh, we want you to be a real person, pick up the script and just say it. You still have to know what kind of real person you are and then right. where you fit within that character. Beautiful. And then kind of go from that place and just keep it as authentic and natural as you possibly mm -hmm. can. And, you know, I would say my major message here today is about authenticity. Mm -hmm. It's about, you know, the voice will follow when you know what you're saying and what your authentic message is. Right. And so if you pick up a piece of copy and you, you have to find some way to be able to relate to it authentically, um, you can never really sell a piece of copy that you're going like, oh, this is like, Drac, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And yeah, and you, can't, times, you can't judge it. You know, at the you same could be time. selling pot roast for four ninety nine, but you know, <laughs> you have to find a way to go. Like, you know what? I'd be psyched if I went to the supermarket and I was on exactly. a budget and I found pot roast for four ninety nine. So, right. like, hey, Stace, I found this really cool deal at Vons, you know, mm -hmm. and that's my real person delivery for that, you know, right. as opposed to like, you know, if we had. Um, a feminine issue, let's say. Yes. You know, and I was a real friend talking mm -hmm. to you, and I'd be like, hey, has this ever happened to you? That's a totally different delivery. They're Completely. both real people. But you're right. keeping it a little bit right. under the radar. Yeah, yeah. so you just have to know. You have to qualify exactly. the context of where you the real are. person. Yeah, yeah. does Love that make it. sense? That's beautiful. That's really cool. Up top, too. All up right, top. so now if anybody has problems out there getting into the conversational <laughs> read, yes. and you just apply that, and if mm -hmm. you still can't do it, well, then just call me and I'll keep <laughs> it. There you go. Let's go there right now. Okay, so you guys worked together a lot mm -hmm. back in the day, as they say. We did, back in um, the day. But you, even as busy as you, are, as you are, you're still, you're coaching. So what is, how can people get a hold of you? How can people um, find you? Very easily, actually. Uh, you can email me at tinamorosco at gmail.com. Right My website is tinamorosco.com, which I don't mm -hmm. know if you'll pop it up on the screen, yes, but it's just tinamorosco.com. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just very easy to find me. Yeah, easy. I yeah. do Skype. I do in person. You know, whatever. So you can work with convenient. anybody, no matter where no they matter. live. Anybody, no matter, no matter as where long they, as they are. speak English. Yeah, I'm is your, your girl. girl. Whatever, I'm whatever girl. it is. So we, Stacey and I have this show uh, on HGTV, Love It or List It. Yeah. You guys have seen it, I'm sure. <laughs> because we're um, renovation crazy people. Exactly. Who and isn't? Like, we do our own renos, and so yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, like, first of all, we were like fanatics of that show. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. We loved every single episode and still do. And I remember listening very closely because I analyzed every voice out there, whether mm -hmm. it's for a commercial or a promo or a trailer or in-show. Um, and I'm listening to the in-show announcer the for delivery. Love It or Listed yeah. and the delivery. And I'm like, wow, that is such a very specific delivery. Like, how did they come up <laughs> with somebody that sounds like that, right? And then... And I said to him, that's Tina. And, and he's I'm like, like no, no, it's not. That's, I was like, it's, that is Tina. <laughs> Tina does not sound like yes, that. I remember texting you going, T, yeah, I remember and you, that. And you, were, and you were like, yeah, that's me. I'm like, look, Chuck. He's like, because it's distinctive. Well, you should know, too, because Chuck has produced all of my demos. Well, like, yeah, for years. But, mm -hmm. but I never heard you talk like that. Uh -huh. They have a little thing that they do, da da ba 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 mm -hmm. that's uh, that lot of, like, little up-speaking little right. things. Mm -hmm. And very, very, and I taught, I taught, Talked to you at a party once, and you told me that sometimes if you don't do that, they'll get back to you and say, oh, "Yeah, sure. we need to pick up a line because you didn't do that little thing." Right, right, right. Yeah. It became yeah. like a sig uh, it evolved uh, naturally, but it yeah. became like a signature style. Yeah. And so let's go back and let's talk about how you it came yes. to you. It's actually Give a hilarious story. Love it or listed moment coming yeah. up it right here. It is a very, very funny story. So I had just recently switched agents and mm -hmm. signed with Atlas and Heather Virgo, who's over there, and awesome. she is a Love amazing. Mm -hmm. um, 
she knew that I really wanted to get more into narration. And so she called me one morning and I was not feeling my best. I was like, I had a little cold, like I sounded a little froggy and I had yet to get my home studio really up to par. Mm -hmm. So I was a little nervous and self-conscious about like really being in, able to engineer a session myself and all of that. And, uh, so she called me and she said, listen, I have this great opportunity for you, but you have to do it in the next like 15, 20 minutes. Um, a producer friend of mine in Knoxville, Tennessee, it's this amazing production company, called and they are doing a spec for this show that we don't know if it's going to get greenlit at HDTV, but if it does, it could turn into a full series. Mm -hmm. But they want to put an actual voiceover person on the scratch instead of just having a producer do the scratch. Right. So they can really sell it in the best possible light. And uh, so you'll get paid for the session. And if it goes, it'll turn into a series. And if not, you got a free session out of it. Right. And I am not joking. I said to her, you know what? I just... <clears throat> I have a little frog going on and, and uh, you know, I just don't know if my home studio is up to par. You know, my dogs might start barking or whatever. And, uh, you know, it's totally okay. I really appreciate the offer, but why don't you give it to the next oh, person? <laughs> and I hear dead silence, like complete radio silence. And then it's almost like I heard her nails scratching on the thing, like, um... <laughs> I don't think you understand the gravity of the situation, <laughs> T. And I was like, okay. And she's like, this could turn into an ongoing series mm -hmm. and what da And she literally went like and ran the numbers. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna make yeah. a cup of tea right now yeah. and I'm gonna call my engineer friend. So this is a valuable frog yes. in my throat. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. So <laughs> I made a cup of tea, I poured in like three bottles of honey. I have a friend who's an engineer who has a studio in Manhattan Beach because I mm -hmm. live too far away from Chuck yeah. now. Yes. And uh, because I really didn't want to screw the pooch, as you would say, by right. not having like the best quality mic totally. and the of best course. sound quality, because that we'll get to that later, I'm sure, but yeah. it is so important. Mm -hmm. And um, I hightailed it down to the studio and I did the first session. And I remember thinking like, what an interesting concept for a show. Like, mm -hmm. we can't decide whether we want to stay in our house or move, so right. we'll explore both options and see yeah. what happens, yeah. you know? And um, I did the first one, and literally like a week or two later, wow. I got the call, and, and it's been six years of truly like so the great. greatest gift I have ever been given in this industry, on mm -hmm. camera, voiceover, in any capacity. It's been the most joyful job I have wow. ever had. Yes. Because the producers, now there's like several different producers involved. There was the production company in Tennessee for a while, and now it's been given back to the production company in Canada who originated it. Mm -hmm. yep. And um, they're all such lovely, wonderful people. And it's just, it's got a, you know, like a life of its own right. now. Oh, right. And we're all like a well-oiled machine. And mm -hmm. so yep. we just go in and like laugh and, and my producer, so I still do it at the same studio. Yeah. At the end, he makes like blooper reels. So like we all listen to the bloopers <laughs> from each. I mean, it's just like, it's just love and joy and like, it's yeah, just yeah. so much fun. So great. So you go so to- you say open concept on a daily oh, basis. No, I know. Be, we oh have to turn this into a drinking game. I because know. Because totally. you would be so loaded funny. by act two yeah. by just drinking every time I say open concept. Yeah, or like absolutely. HVAC system. Or, <laughs> Relocated so do you record <laughs> any? You go record them from another studio, not I, from home. I I could do it from home, but it's just so much engineering. Mm -hmm. To be right. honest, it's an hour right. long show, and so um, it's just easier for me to go down there. And now we're recording to picture, and we actually like you know place it in the you know in the time in the codes and all that stuff. Yeah, and go. that's a little outside my okay, pay grade. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. You definitely <laughs> yeah. need an engineer for yeah, that. Yeah. Um, what about? So, are you directed during those sessions? So. With the original production company, I was directed, and it was great because every director, you know, like they all kind of moved on to other jobs, and then yeah. I would get somebody new, and then there would be that learning curve. But right. they were all such, and I'm shouting out to you guys at Red Arrow, like, and to Big Coat, um, such amazing people. They were all like young and eager and like willing to learn from me, and I was mm -hmm. willing to like learn from them. And so it was just wonderful. So they were directing the sessions, and what we do is we take like each block. Mm -hmm. So say we'll do the cold open, uh -huh. and I'll do three in a row of the cold open, and they'll go like, all right, I like number three. Or they'll be like, what did you like? You know, it's so collaborative. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, now, because it is so well-oiled and, um, you know, just because Canada is, you know, we have the time issue yep. and stuff, they'll usually let us go solo. And if they have any revisions, they, right. you know, call us. But it's 
very few and far yeah, between. Yeah, after yeah. all yeah. this time. I mean, yeah. it's like, mm -hmm. if you don't know what you're doing now, Right, man, exactly. Right? Exactly. You can probably do it in your sleep. I you could probably often do it do in, in my sleep. Yeah, I know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> if my so, dogs could talk. Well, I know. I have to say, well, we have to say congratulations. Yes, because that you. is not only a mm -hmm. sweet gig. It is a sweet, uh, yeah. And, and, and career changing. It was. But yeah. what a great show to just be a part of. It know? is, and, it is. And when you're such, you're such that warm, welcoming, you know, especially when they hit an issue. Oh, yeah. I know. You know, then you got to bring like, it down. You're that, you know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it's like, what? <laughs> I, what I, what Not I love water damage like, in the basement people, again. Totally. It's like, right. people's houses are in crap shape, and then they get pissed because right. Hillary's like, hey, and it's like, listen, you left your house in disrepair. Right. Now she does, it's so yeah. funny. But she does an but incredible totally. job. She yeah. really it's does. It's insane, like, yeah. the and, way she can transform spaces. And they're funny. Yeah. Oh, they're yeah. so good together. The, the their chemistry banter. is great. Yeah. Have you met any of the hosts? Hillary I haven't, David actually. I want to. Now that they're shooting in... So they used to all be shot in Canada. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Love It or List It, original flavor, is in North Carolina. Right. So I'm actually thinking of making a trip out that and like meeting great. the crew cool. and all yeah. of that. Yeah, because That would be amazing. very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I've they been have opposed... great studios in North Carolina. You can record Oh, there. that's right. You're yeah. from here. You're a Southern girl. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, I lived there a couple of years. They have good studios, so... <laughs> Give me in, all the recos. I'll read the refrigerator. Yeah. That would be so cool. Wouldn't it be fun to have tea in an episode? I think so. I'm in. Right, yeah. you're a congressman. Yeah, we're a congressman. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tina, why don't you take us back to how you actually got into this wonderful world of voiceover and acting? Take us back. Okay, I'm taking you way back. back like we need Jersey. a time machine. Let's, like, total. let's go back to Jersey in the let's late do it. 80s. Ooh, early Jersey 90s. in the late 80s. I know. So, um, I will never forget it. I was in college at Rutgers in New Jersey, literally paying no attention to my future whatsoever. I was a cheerleader all the way through college. I went out every night of the week, still got good grades, whatever. Mm -hmm. And I remember like- she's really smart. <laughs> <laughs> and I was laying on my bed in New Brunswick, New Jersey with my bare feet up on the floor. And I was talking to my girlfriend, Leanne, who had graduated a year before me and worked at William Morris as an agent assistant. And she's like, so what are you going to do? And I'm like, thick Jersey accent, chewing gum, spiral perm down to my butt, you know, like, and I'm like, I don't know. I hadn't really thought about it. Like, literally didn't even have a resume. I graduated like two days ago. Yeah. And um, she's like, well, why don't you get a job as an agent and you can learn all about the business and you always wanted to be an actor, right? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, so you could take acting classes at night in the city. This was in New York. And... Um, you'll have the best of both worlds. And I was like, all right, sounds good. And I kid you not, three days later, I was picking up Julie Roberts dry cleaning. No. I swear to God. Like, <laughs> I went in, I didn't even know what an agent was, nor did I feel the need to research this. Very at good. all. Like, my life was just like this she ridiculous. She has changed since then. <laughs> I know. Oh now I research God. a lot. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I, I like took a train into the city. I met with Pat Galloway, who has started so many epic careers mm -hmm. in the industry as agents and producers. And yeah. She's amazing. And I think she must have just liked my naivete or like my like innocent charm because I did not fake anything. I was just authentic. It's yeah. like yes. the, the thread that goes through everything, yep, yep. right? It's right. like when you're authentically yourself, people respond to that. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, you know, she gave me a shot. I had to meet with all, you know, I did the agent trainee thing, you know, right. and had to meet with all the different agents and you're pushing the mail cart, like swimming with sharks. And, and I loved it. Like, I loved it because it was this really unique, interesting world that I knew nothing about. And it was all about people. It was literally just all about connecting with people. So, so cool. you know, you're delivering the mail and you get to know the assistants yep. and slowly you work your way up the ranks and I became an assistant in the TV lit department, which was fun, but not really like my speed. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up just by happenstance getting a job as Carol Baker's assistant who was in New York, like the voiceover maven. Like everybody knew Carol Baker. She was an incredible mensch. She was yeah. such a mentor and she was like, she just knew voiceover in a way that like, I didn't even know what voiceover was at the time, honestly. But I loved that job because at the time, the assistants in the commercial department at William Morris did a lot of the work while the agents were going out and whining and dining celebrity mm, clients, right? Okay. So the assistants were taking the breakdowns and then they were trying to figure out what clients would be right and they would run it by the agent, but they were doing a lot of the work. And yeah. so it was a really, really fast-paced, fun, 
terrific learning curve. And I got to talk to all the casting directors on a daily basis and the casting assistants who have a lot of power. And, um, yeah. and then you develop relationships with them. You go out to dinner with them. You figure out, like, you know, what they need when they're looking for actors. And then you start going out at night looking for actors and, um, and then bringing them in and developing them. And so that was my time at William Morris. And I look back at it and I just go like, oh, my God. I mean, I was like 22 <laughs> years old and directing Alec Baldwin. Like Alec Baldwin would come in and read a voiceover script. And I'd be like, that was really good, Alec. But um, let's try one without the rasp. <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, and he didn't yell at me. Like they were all so lovely. And How kind. does he sound without the rap? <laughs> I, he couldn't. He never did. He's you like, know what I, I mean? He's I like, can't do that. I know, but and but it was like I must have been the most adorable or annoying like <laughs> human being to these people. And like at the time, John Stewart was just like this up and coming guy that we would send out on like you know Clarisol auditions, Crazy. and like yeah, and like so Gilbert cool. Gottfried would come in and just be tugging on me like, take me to the wee wee room. Take me to the wee-wee room. And I'd be like, Gilbert, go. I have work to do. You yeah. know, like, uh, it was just this cast of characters coming yeah, in on yeah. a daily basis. And you were, it was trial by fire. You were just learning on the job. So you just, you had to kind of think on your feet. And yeah. that's the only way to learn is through experience. You just got to get thrown into it yep. and swim. Ooh. Yep. So uh, I did that for about three years in total. And they came to me and said, okay, it's time. We want to make you an agent. We want you to get a client list together. And I went home and I was like, uh, didn't I always want to be an actor? I was like, gosh, I had to do a real gut check, you know? Mm -hmm. And I went back in and I said, I am so grateful and thank you so much, but I think I have to pursue my dream, which was to be an actor. And much to my shock, they were like, okay, well, you're family, so we'll represent you. And I was like, but you're William Morris. And like, yeah, so you were an agent and an actor. Right, right, no, no, they said, you know, when you yeah. leave, we'll represent you. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. She you didn't know. develop herself. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so I went, I got into some acting classes with our dear friend, Melissa Greenspan. Yes. And um, got a waitressing job, which I was horrible at. I did that for, I don't know, maybe not even a year. And then ICM in New York mm -hmm. came a call-in. And um, at the time, they only represented celebrities for voiceover. And the L.A. office of ICM, which is now DPN, was absolutely killing it in the scale of voiceover world. I mean, yeah. they were just making so much yeah. money, hand over fist. And the New York office was like, we want a piece of that action. Right. So my boss, who ended up being my boss at ICM, his name is Stephen Arcieri, he went to ICM from an agency that was doing scale because he wanted to do celebrities. Mm -hmm. So when they commissioned him to start a scale department, he was like, I'll start it, but I'm not gonna run it because that's not what I came here to do. So let me find somebody to, to develop and hire. And so he would ask around to different casting people like who they would recommend and they were like, well, our favorite assistant was at William Morris, but we think she's acting now, but we don't know how happy she is, right? right. Uh, we heard she's a pretty bad waitress. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you might want to consider yeah. contacting her. So Stephen started calling me and saying, you know, this is what I'm trying to do. And I met with him and, like, instant rapport. Again, it's about, like, relationships and mm -hmm. all of that. And I considered it, but I was like, you know, I haven't really given it much of a chance. It's been like six months. <laughs> and <laughs> honestly, though, I was going to auditions that William Morris was sending me out on, and I was going up with, like, Gillian Anderson and Calista Flockhart, and I'd mm. be like, well, my hair looks good. Yeah, <laughs> That's about all I have going for me, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Because I wasn't, you know, I had dabbled in acting classes, but I right. wasn't actually a legit actress, yeah. you know? <laughs> but I did have good hair, because yes. it, was, it was still spiral permed. Oh, yes. and <laughs> <laughs> and that was still You've okay. You always had good hair teeth. So, um, so you know, I, I held him off for a little while. And then I think like maybe a month or two went by and I got home from my waitressing job and I yeah. had like margaritas slapped all over my arms and like I'm eating SpaghettiOs out of the can, watching Dick Van Dyke on Nick at Night. It's like 2.30 in the morning because that's the <laughs> life of like totally. an out-of-work yep. actor slash yep. waitress in New York City. And we had answering machines at the time and it was blinking and I play it and he's and I'm like eating my SpaghettiOs and he's like... Uh, Okay, Tina, this is Steven. Like, this is my final call. Like, I have to make a decision tomorrow. You're my first choice. So give me a call, 9 a.m. If, you, if you're interested. And, like, I looked down at my SpaghettiOs, and I looked <laughs> up at Dick Van Dyke, and I was like, 
all right, I'm back. <laughs> and and um, so I went over there and he became another incredible mentor in my life because mm. boy, does he know voiceover like yeah. nobody's yeah. business. Now again, these are a lot of East Coast people, so the LA folks might not be as familiar, but he is an incredible agent. And um, he said, listen, New York does not need another voiceover agency. It's saturated. So yeah. if we just start stealing clients from everybody else, we're just going to go down. Like there's not going to be anything special about us at all. So what I want our plan to be is we need to create something completely innovative, something New York has never seen before. And so what we did was we went to Broadway and off Broadway and stand up and performance art. And if I saw somebody juggling on the street that I thought was interesting, mm -hmm. we would bring them in. People from all walks of the performance life who had never heard of voiceover before, and we taught them how to do voiceover, which mm. is really mm -hmm. where I got my education. Right. Yeah. So, because I would listen to Stephen and I would listen to how he would teach them. And then, you know, of course, I had my own two cents from three years at William Morris and stuff. And we created the most interesting client list. Uh, mm -hmm. Honestly, like to this day in my professional life, I would say that's one of my greatest accomplishments was the three years that I put in at ICM and the clients that we built mm -hmm. and the department that we built. Mm -hmm. it, was, um, it was really something special. And at the time, both of our lives were open enough that we were working like 18 hour days, seriously. Yeah. Like we would go to work all day. We would go out to look at, you know, look for talent. Yeah. Then when we would like, then we produced demos for every single one of those clients because none of them had ever worked in voiceover before. Mm -hmm. So we would bring them in at like seven o'clock at night. We'd give them a bunch of copy. We would record them in the booth. And then Stephen and I would produce it. We would find music. We would do the sound effect. We would do the whole nine. Uh, yeah. And um, that's how we made our first like ICM agency reel. I did that for three years. And then there was just something in there that was not mm -hmm. fulfilled. And that is not normal for me at all. And our dear friend, Melissa, had yes. gotten me a reading with this psychic who was also on Broadway. So he was like part-time <laughs> part actor, part-time psychic, right? I love that. I know. And Appearing he shows up tonight, in my apartment like at midnight on a Friday he after his show. Calls. Yes, exactly. Of course he does. Basically, long story short, was he's like, you're not doing, you're not fulfilling your destiny, like mm. what you were put on this earth to do. You're an actor. And I was like, no, 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 no. I work with actors. That's what you're seeing. There's actors all around me. And he's like, no, no, no you're an actor. He's like, but don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You will meet a woman with long silver hair. She will be an acting teacher and you will follow her lead and just trust her and mentor her or whatever. So I ask around a bunch of my clients, uh, you know, hypothetically speaking, if a friend were trying to get into the <laughs> acting side of things, who would you recommend they study with? And like three people who I really, really respected recommended this woman named Zena Jasper. Mm -hmm. And so I made an appointment with her, knock, knock, knock on her door on Riverside Drive in New York. She opens after the door. Midnight. Yeah, also after midnight. <laughs> long, like the most gorgeous, long, silver oh. hair. And I just was like, oh my God, I had the chills, right? And so I took her class. I was possibly the worst actress she has ever worked with. Like, I was horrible. I remember doing this monologue, like, I remember my mother's red hat. Like, I was so bad. Like, like so, so bad. Yeah. Right? Like, trying to, like, do what you think yes. an actor should Actually, do in a dramatic yes. monologue. Yeah, right? yeah. And God love her. She just saw the potential, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know where it was, but she, she saw it and uh, just took me under her wing and I took her class for about a year and then I said, you know what, I think I really want to do this. And if I do this, I want to be the best I can be. I don't want to be a hack. Yeah. I already did that for six months. Um, so I want to go back to grad school because all of my clients who I really, really respected, mm -hmm. they all had a master's degree in acting, which I didn't even know was a thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I thought, what a perfect way to reinvent myself. I'll go from being an agent, I'll hide away for three years in a conservatory. I'll get voice training and speech training. You have to imagine at this point, totally. I still have a thick Jersey accent. Yes. Like, yeah, ma, uh, yeah, I'm going yeah, to the store. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> they wouldn't even let me slate some of my clients' names because I had such bad glottal stop, like Jesse Martin. Look, Jesse and, Martin. Like, I can't even do it now <laughs> as bad as I used to do it. But um, <laughs> so I 
decided to suicide one school because I thought, all right, I've, this is really my fate, then I'm going to just leave it up to chance. And at the time, William Esper was heading the Rutgers mm -hmm. program for the master's there. And um, I got my monologues together and I auditioned just for the one program. I didn't tell anybody. And sure enough, I got in. Mm -hmm. So like six months later, I was Sweet. traded in my corner office for yeah. a dirty floor at Rutgers University mm -hmm. and off I went into the acting world. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty Man, crazy. Man, talk yeah. about taking like leaps. Yeah, it was know? a leap. It was a yeah. huge, huge, huge leap of faith. Well, that's it for part one with Tina Morosco. Be sure and tune in next week for part two. It's going to be awesome. Absolutely. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And just remember, you, you always, always have time for a little buzz. Come on, come on, come on and get buzzed with us. The Old Buzz Weekly is sponsored by Chuck Duran's Demo Fit Rock. Rock. The voiceover demo producer to the stars is now available to you. Visit demosbitrock.com and take your voiceover career to the next level. See you next time. And remember, you always have time for a little buzz.